For the last couple of years, Tail Worlds has struggled to balance the smithing skill. It started off with javelins that would craft for a single piece of wrought iron and sell for well over 100,000 dinars. Then two-handed swords and pole arms that would sell for even more. Eventually, they nerfed it by cutting sale prices of crafted items by half or more. 1.8 has added yet another balance change. But is it enough to stop the exploitation of the crafting system? Negative. Let's start with the biggest difference in 1.8 crafting unlocks. Prior patches, you would unlock parts at random, both in the tier of the part and the weapon category. It was possible to unlock a higher tier part right off the bat, securing your economy right away. But now, part unlocks are tied to the weapon category that is being crafted or smelted, and low tier parts must be unlocked before unlocking the next tier. As always, I did an unhealthy amount of testing and data collection here trying to figure out the exact formula they use now. I started off with two-handed axes, since it's a weapon that provides decent XP and some Sale prices, but also has less parts than most other categories, which would allow us to get to the top tier parts faster. There are 92 parts in total, which is broken down into five tiers, with tier 1 having 12 parts, tier 2 having 16, and so on. We won't spend a ton of time on the database this time. Aww. I know, I know, I'm sorry to disappoint. These are all of the available two handed axes in the game at the start and their buying prices as a level 1 trade character. I tested to see how many of each needed to be smelted in order to unlock all parts of a specific level and then computed the average unlock cost if we were to buy those items to smelt. I stopped testing after tier 3 parts using the tier 2 axe because I now have arthritis on my right pointer finger. Tail worlds. Please give us a bulk option for smithing. My mouse will love you for it. Looking at the part unlock cost at each tier, you'll notice an increasing trend such that each unlock part makes the subsequent part more expensive to unlock. Taking the tier 2 axe as an example, the first part unlocks after 12 smelts and the second part after 15 smelts. If my estimates are correct, it would take 2152 tier 2 axes smelted to unlock all two-handed axe parts. Fortunately, there are other ways to increase the speed of unlocking as well. You can craft and smelt higher tier parts as they unlock, or buy higher tier weapons from a town and smelt. For example, we could buy 32 heavy executioner axes for 1.7 million dinars and unlock everything. Sounds like pay to win if you ask me. I love it. I did the same for two-handed swords and pole arms, and here are the results. Pole arms have 99 unlocks and would cost 43 war razors at 44,000 each, or 1.9 million dinars, and two-handed swords have a whopping 254 parts to unlock, which would require 131 tier 6 swords to be smelted at 57,000 each, or a staggering 7.5 million dinars. And the final method for unlocking, which is my favorite, is completing crafting orders. Buying high-end weapons to smelt isn't an option at the start of the game, so let's look at the other two in closer detail. I'm going to show you my favorite opener for a smithing playthrough, starting with a Batanian character and high endurance. We immediately make our way to Sanon to the northeast and sell all of our clothes, horse armor, and any non-smeltable weapons. We will hang on to the others for crafting materials. Buy up all the wood you can, a scepter horse, and some food. Now we refine the hardwood into charcoal, taking care to stop at level 25 smithing to take the better charcoal conversion perk. Once all of the hardwood is refined, we we should be around level 75 smithing and have a few thousand dinars from selling extra charcoal. At this point we can decide which unlock route we want to take. Let's start with the craft smelt method. I personally find two-handed swords to be the easiest category to make money with and a good place to begin. We max out each part and craft as many as we can, then smelt them back down and repeat. As crafting materials run low, be sure to sell off a weapon or two so you can buy more cheap weapons from town and smelt them down. I find the daggers and throwing knives to be particularly good deals and generally buy all of them. For crude iron, blacksmith hammers are a great value, or don't hesitate to refine wrought iron into regular iron to pick up the crew. Once in a while, the town you're in will get sieged, so be sure not to be greedy and stay overburdened. The Curious Smelter and Curious Smith perks are great pickups for our main character, speeding up the unlocks by quite a bit. By the end, it took us 8 days to unlock all tier 1 parts. We crafted 30 weapons, smelted 22, and sold 8. Our character reached level 87 and had a balance of 7,500 dinars. Not bad, but let's compare this to completing crafting orders. 
We reload the save from earlier, but now travel from town to town looking for two-handed sword orders to complete. Try not to stress too much over passing the order. The XP and unlock amount is roughly the same regardless of the outcome and only the dinar reward is reduced. Looking at a quick test, we see a pass giving 34,000 base XP with the fail on the exact same order giving only 1,700 base XP less or about a 5% reduction. The nice thing about this method is you can fight bandits along the way, compete in tournaments, even get Naretsi's Folly Quest out of the way at the same time. It's difficult to say how long this will take since orders are RNG, but you can expect roughly 50% of the towns to have two-handed sword quests to do. We visited 18 towns, crafted 8 orders to unlock all tier 1 parts, of which we passed 5 and failed 3. C's get degrees, am I right? Our main character ended up at level 96 smithing and our bank balance was at 22,600. As you can tell, crafting orders still give an absurd amount of XP and unlocks. The only bottlenecks are the availability and the travel time between towns. For the final section, it's sort of a recap and sort of a collection of interesting things and bugs I discovered along the way that should be useful to you. Unlocks are now limited to the weapon type you are crafting or smelting. All tier 1 parts must be unlocked before any tier 2 parts unlock and so forth up to tier 5. Unlocks are not tied to the skill XP gain. If you have a 12.5x learning rate, you will unlock parts at the same rate as a character with 0x learning rate. Parts that you start with still need to be unlocked, so sometimes you will get a pop-up saying that you learned a new part only to find the same number of parts known. This also includes the pommel known as none. Yes, you need to learn how to craft none before you can move on. Sometimes, if you unlocked a new part, it will not show as unlocked until you exit the smithy and re-enter. Crafting orders still give a massive XP and part unlock boost. On the low end, for a huge XP weapon craft, it gave 9.4 times more XP, and for a low XP weapon, it can be upwards of 33 times. Weapons that are labeled as both one-handed and two-handed compatible, such as a sword will unlock parts as if it were a two-handed weapon. The XP for crafting a weapon is the same as the XP for smelting it, but smelting unlocks anywhere from 60 to 300% faster. I'm not sure why it's such a huge range. Perhaps a little bit of Tail World's math going on here. Curious Smith is supposed to unlock at 100% faster rate, but the data showed anywhere from 110 to 120% faster, so it's a great perk. In the previous patch, there were two-handed maces in the game, but it was only two wooden mallet heads. Now, there's a fully fleshed out two-handed mace category to pick from. There are over 80 weapon parts to choose, and this little creation is my favorite. I call it the Dentist, and I think you can imagine why. Also, I've been testing out the realistic battle mod, and it's a completely different experience. Combat is a lot more difficult, but also more rewarding. Watch as we extract these two looter's teeth for free. There's a fun little exploit I came across when trying to save my finger from clicking so much. After you craft a weapon, press enter a few times and you will cycle the combat log pop-up as well as click off of the crafted item pop-up. If you press it a couple more times, it will oddly bring up the crafted item pop-up again. But notice that some of your resources were taken and an item was crafted from it. If you have stamina, it uses it. But if you run out of stamina, you can actually keep using this to craft. And just like that, you now have access to infinite crafting stamina. I've got a couple final thoughts I wanted to share. I've always loved the crafting system in Bandalord. It's definitely been unbalanced from the start, but I just really enjoy customizing weapons for myself and for my companions. It seems the changes they made recently are aimed at slowing down the overall progression of smithing, which I think they were successful at to a certain extent, but overall I still feel like it's unbalanced. Unlocking all of the two-handed sword parts wasn't that hard to do and making millions in a short amount of time is still possible. I feel like the biggest issue with balancing crafting is the Pugio and Trisman daggers, which both give high tier crafting parts for only a couple hundred dinars purchase. If they can force the player to refine more and take refining perks on a companion maybe, it would slow down the progression into the late game even further and make it more rewarding. Don't forget to use the dentist on that like button and I'll see you on the next one. I've always loved the crafting system.